Good evening and welcome to another episode of On The Sofa. I'm Adam and this is actually my first On The Sofa appearance after recently discovering that I'm a Seth of Clan Douglas. And tonight I'm joined by Monia and Susan. Here at Scotland Shop, we love celebrating clan stories and did you know that we have a whole section on our website dedicated to around 200 Scottish clans. So if you're interested in the history of your particular clan, then we certainly recommend taking a look. Okay, thanks Adam. Right, so this month we are celebrating all things Clan Douglas. So join us tonight as we delve into Douglas history and discuss some of their most significant strongholds from centuries gone by. We'll be learning about some of the, their famous battles, famous faces old and new, and so much more. Uh, as always, we welcome your input. If you So if you're associated with Clan Douglas in any way um, and you have stories to share, then please let us know. Uh, we love hearing a variety of stories from Clan members all around the world and how they ended up there. So let's get to it, dive into some Clan Douglas. So the Douglases became one of the most powerful and influential dynasties in Scotland, with the name Douglas said to be derived from the Gaelic meaning black water. Although there are many early origins of the clan which remain unknown, the first association of Douglas on record is that of Theobald Le Fleming, who was granted the Douglas lands in Lanarkshire by Abbot of Kelso, and that was in the early 12th century, so very long time ago. His son, William I, became Lord of Douglas, and he was the first man to assume the name, assuming that's why he's Douglas I. <laughs> yeah, it would make sense. It would indeed. <laughs> So as centuries went on, the Douglas family became more powerful. Sir James Douglas, who died in 1330, was known as the Black Douglas. A uh, little picture being brought up there. And fought beside Robert the Bruce during the Wars of Independence. Um, shortly before Bruce died in 1329, he asked Sir James Douglas to take his heart in a casket to Jerusalem and place it in the church of Holy... Is it Sip? Sip? Sepulchre. Sepulchre. There, we, we, we did, have googled that one. Yeah, we did. We did <laughs> practice earlier, but you can see there that didn't our practice didn't help. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we tried. James and his loyal group of Douglases were confronted um, by the Moors of Spain while transporting the heart. Following this, James is said to have uttered the rallying call "Forward, Braveheart!" as he led a full frontal assault on the Moors. But sadly, James and the majority of his followers were reported to have been killed, which is not so good. Yeah. However, there were a number of survivors from the battle. The story goes um, that the King's heart was subsequently returned to Scotland to be buried at Melrose Abbey in the Scottish borders, where it still lies today. At least they brought it back, I guess. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout the origins of the clan and for many centuries to come, Douglas territories could be found across the borders and into North Northumberland. But the main territories are in the lowlands of Scotland, including Lanarkshire, Galloway, Dumfrieshire, and Angus. As a Berica myself, I'm not actually too far away from the original Douglas territories and would certainly recommend visiting them if you want to walk in the steps of your Douglas ancestors and learn the history. You've been doing a lot of that, haven't you, recently, Adam? I have, yes, delving deep, deep into it. be really interesting. Sort of, I, I know that when I first started, I didn't realise a lot of my sort of Scottish and mm. a wee bit of Irish history, so... Yeah. Always, always nice to dive on in to your clan. Definitely so. Definitely so. <laughs> okay, so moving on to um, the clan crest motto and tartans. <clears throat> so the clan crest features a salamander um, surrounded by flames with the motto Jamais Arrière, which translates to never behind. Um, there we go. Uh, we can see here a little image there of the clan crest. Um, the plant badge of Clan Douglas is actually a roux. And did you know uh, that plant badges are used to identify a member of a particular clan? Tartans. There are five Douglas tartans, which we stock here at the Scotland Shop, uh, including Douglas Ancient, Modern and Weathered, as well as Douglas Grey, Ancient and Modern. That was a mouthful there, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, Macarena has kindly popped them up there for you to have a look at. You've got some uh, lovely ones got the mannequins behind you as well. Oh, yeah, we yeah. do. We've got our mannequins here with modeling <laughs> yeah we've got the douglas gray on the, <clears throat> the ladies kilted skirt and then douglas modern on the two-piece which is that what you've got behind you as well Adam? Uh, i have the ancient here behind me so oh the ancient a nice bit of variety yeah showing you showing you them all in person as well yes yeah. and they are um, are all on our website as well and um, so macaroon has kindly popped 
the link in the comments if you do want to have a look. Um, you can also order swatches um, if you want to have a wee look at them in person first. Mm -hmm. Um, so hello to Charles who's joining us tonight. Um, it's nice to have you with us, Charles. And he's saying that the tartan behind you, Adam, um, that one looks very similar to his family tartan as well. Good choice. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're uh, sort of representing the Douglases tonight with your tie as well. So it is uh, the Ancient's a very nice one. I think you can see yeah. the colours a bit better in the Ancient, can't you? Yeah. It's a bit lighter. Yeah, good. So let's move on to some of the bloodier history and the, the battles of the okay. Douglases. So members of Clan Douglas <clears throat> fought many battles um, and none were more notable than the Wars of Independence during the 13th and 14th centuries. So Scotland and England are two nations divided by their history and that divide was never wider than during this period in history. So during the Wars of Independence, Sir William Douglas the Hardy, Lord of Douglas, was governor of Berwick-upon-Tweed when the town and Berwick Castle were besieged by the forces of Edward I of England. So there are parts of Berwick Castle that remain today, and if you are ever visiting the famous walled town, then do be sure to walk along the river and discover the castle ruins. And um, there's a photo on screen there, and I've personally never been. Maybe yeah. you have, Adam, sort of yeah. from the yeah, area. Yeah. Yeah, as, as I previously mentioned, I'm from Berwick myself, and I'd say the Castle Ruins are definitely a really historical part of the town. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly worth a visit if you're ever if you're ever visiting, and if you travel through by train, then you'll be able to see them from the Royal Border Bridge. So, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely recommend if you're visiting Berwick at any point. No, it's uh, very beautiful, in the, at least yeah, in the photos. Yeah. So. <laughs> So Douglas was subsequently captured um, and was released only after he had agreed to, claim, uh, to accept the claim of the English king to be overlord of Scotland. So he then joined William Wallace in fighting for Scottish independence, but was captured and taken to England where he died in 1298 um, while he was a prisoner in the Tower of London. So clearly <clears throat> didn't learn his lesson against the English, unfortunately. No, unfortunately not. Uh, so while we're on the subject, um, if you're interested in learning more about the Wars of Independence, watch out for a whole series of features around this and the Declaration of Arbroath in April. So that's coming up quite soon because actually we're, yeah, we're nearing the end of, I was going to say the new, new end of May, March. Um, <laughs> Get anyway, ahead of yourself. <laughs> yes, getting ahead of myself. Um, so let's turn our focus now uh, to another ferocious Douglas battle. Uh, so the Battle of Bannockburn which took place in June 1314, uh, was a decisive battle in Scottish history, whereby the Scots led by Robert the Bruce defeated the English under Edward II, uh, expending Robert's territory, territory and influence. The victory was a combination of Bruce's demand of 1313, that all of the remaining Balliol supporters acknowledged his kingship or forfeit their estates with the imminent surrender of the English garrison encircled in Stirling Castle, which spurred Edward II to invade Scotland. Although the victory for the Scots did not bring outright victory in the war, it did assist with it and was declared 14 years later. So quite a, quite a bit later, Ongoing actually. Ongoing battle, yeah. yeah. Good, good. So as we've already touched upon, Sir James Douglas was a key member of the clan and was also known as the Black Douglas. But what was the reason behind this? To the Scot, he was known as Good Sir James Douglas. However, to the English, he was actually referred to as the Black Douglas, mm. mainly due to his dangerous ferocity in battles and brutal raiding style. One of his most fearsome attacks was the siege of Roxburgh Castle, which took place in 1314. Due to the castle being well guarded, Sir James Douglas disguised, disguised his men as cows to surprise the guards and take the castle by surprise. There were many casualties during the siege, including the leader being struck in the face with an arrow. That's certainly quite, okay. a, quite a tactic. Not jolly. Um, Not a jolly end. Although he was arguably overshadowed throughout his time by his monumental leader, the deeds of Sir James Douglas provide an important part of history linking back to 14th century Scotland and the Wars of Independence. For anyone actually interested in the history of Sir James Douglas, Robert the Bruce and the Scottish Wars of Independence, we would definitely recommend you to watch the 2018 historical drama Outlaw King with Aaron Taylor Johnson, who does a fantastic job playing Sir James. I've not personally seen it. Have you guys seen that one? 
have not actually. actually. Yeah, it's you. good. Yeah, oh, Re- I would recommend. Yeah, recommend watching it. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so we've also got Luke joining us tonight. Hi, Luke. And Luke's family tartan is actually Douglas Modern. Ah, there so we go. another good choice. And that's um, <clears throat> that's your tie, isn't it, Adam? You've got the modern on your tie, yep, and yep. you've got the modern on the yeah. the gentleman behind us as well. So that's a nice one, a very nice yeah. tartan. So now we move on to look at some of the famous seats of Clan Douglas. It's a uh, one of one of our favorite parts yep we love a good judge of a castle <laughs> yeah, don't we, like, we? <laughs> we like to judge a castle <laughs> so first off we have douglas castle and that's the historic <clears throat> seat of clan douglas so after being well established by 1300 it served as a stronghold for the clan up until the 19th century the castle was occupied by the english during the wars of independence and on palm sunday 1307 Sir James Douglas and a few followers trapped the English garrison while they were worshipping in the castle chapel before burning it to the ground. Quite, yeah. Again, another brutal, yeah. brutal <clears throat> end. So this event, which also badly damaged the rest of Castle Douglas, became known as the Douglas Larder. Very little remains of Castle Douglas now, as you can see on the screen there, except for a corner tower of three stories and vaulted cellars, which date back to the 16th century. I'm sure it was very beautiful back in its yeah. day. <clears throat> a shame that there's only a wee bit, a wee turret left. A little bit. Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay. Sir Walter, uh, sorry, Sir Walter Scott immortalised Douglas Castle in his story, Castle Dangerous. Uh, Macarin has posted a link to this in the comments, um, so if you want to yeah, find it more, uh, please have a look. Whilst he implemented, implemented his well-known writing style into this novel, Scott became scum- somewhat unhappy with his representation of the Douglas area, which he had not visited since he was a child. I suppose, yeah, yeah if you're just... As a result, he took a journey to Lanarkshire, that was good of him, hoping to refresh his impressions of the ruined castle and Douglas Church and to pick up local traditions and customs. I suppose that's probably quite good if you're going to be writing. It's very yeah. quite relevant. Get a bit of background history. <laughs> exactly. exactly. About 65 miles south of Douglas Castle is the town of Castle Douglas. There you go, that one. Original name. Like a bit of a riddle there. <laughs> uh, which was founded in 1792 by William Douglas. He had apparently made his money um, in American trade and created a planned town on the shores of Carling Work Loch. The town's layout is based upon the grid pattern of streets as used in Edinburgh's new town, which we are quite familiar with being yes, based in are. Edinburgh. Yes. <laughs> uh, built around, so they're actually built around the same time. Over time, transport links to the town have improved significantly, and now it is increasingly seen um, as a base for those touring the southwest of Scotland. It looks very, it looks really nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so on to another uh, quite spectacular seat of the Douglases, which is Drumlin Rig Castle. Built in the late 1600s by William Douglas, first Duke of Queensbury on the site of former 14th and 15th century Douglas stronghold, Drumlin Rig is home of the Duke of Buckley. Over time, the Douglas family stayed close to the monarchy, a relationship which actually deemed successful by both the Douglases and the royals. However, the relationship did have its difficult times, and James Douglas was one of the lords responsible for driving Mary, Queen of Scots, out of the country in 1567. Drumlin Rig is now a five-star tourist attraction and houses the internationally renowned Buckley Art Collection. You can see a picture of it on screen there. It's quite... It's quite something, isn't it? More to our liking than the... uh... I think it's the grandest of the ones that we've uh... heard. Yes. Um, So by visiting the castle, you'll actually surround yourself in over 600 years of Clan Douglas history. Um, I recently had the privilege of interviewing Claire Olram, who is castle manager at Drumlin Rig. She gave me a fascinating insight into the Douglas family, their relationship with the monarchy, and even the filming of Outlander at the castle. So keep an eye out on our Tartan blog tomorrow to read the full interview and I'm sure you'll learn a lot from that. Um, So let's move on to the famous faces of Clan Douglas. We all love a good celebrity story and Clan Douglas has many famous faces both historically and in the modern day. We thought that we would share a few with you and of course if you have any to add pop them in the comments or email us and we'll be happy to share them. First off we've got Michael John Douglas who is more commonly known as Michael Keaton. 
Um, and he's an American actor who started his career in comedic roles and later on transitioned into drama success. So not many people would know that he's actually a Douglas after being professionally recognized as Michael Keaton. So the reason for the name change was actually because the name Michael Douglas was already active and registered with the Screen Actors Guild at the time. So he had to come up with something different, yeah. bit of a shame. <laughs> so Keaton has played key acting roles in many well-known films, including Batman, of course, Pacific Heights and Need for Speed. He also starred in the 2002 film A Shot at Glory, which was filmed at various locations throughout Scotland. So mm-hmm. worth a watch. Yeah. yeah. I think his, I liked his Batman films the best. Not like he didn't make them, you know what I mean? Yeah. When he starred as Batman. <laughs> yeah. He was the best Batman. He was the best Batman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so next up, Gabby Douglas. So born in Virginia, uh, US in 1995. Gabby Douglas had quite the rise to fame in her illustrious gymnastics career. At the London Olympic Games in 2012, Gabby became both the first American to claim gold medals in the team and individual all-around events, as well as the first African-American to win the all-around title. She also competed in the 2015 World Artistic Championships, which were held in Glasgow where she won a team gold medal won by the US. So after finding her love of uh, gymnastics at a very early age, um, she actually left her family at age 14 uh, and moved to Iowa to begin her training. Very impressive. Yeah, uh, commitment, eh? Yeah. So next we have James Buster Douglas. James was born in Columbus, Ohio, um, and is a former American professional boxer who competed between 1981 and 1999. He reigned as undisputed world heavyweight champion in 1990 after defeating Mike Tyson. That was quite an upset. Um, it actually was regarded as one of the greatest upsets in sport history. Douglas was the massive underdog going into the fight, and he was against Tyson, who was undefeated and considered to be one of the best boxers in the world, and still is considered to be one of the greatest in boxing history. Defying expectations, Douglas knocked out Tyson in the 10th round, to claim the WBC, WBA, and IBF titles. So that rounds up our episode this week. But <laughs> might have some questions. Yeah, we do. Yep. So our first question um, we have is who is the current chief of Clan Douglas? Okay, so this is actually one that's been up for a bit a uh, bit of debate recently. Uh, did you know that Clan Douglas does not actually have a chief? His Grace Alexander Douglas Hamilton, the 16th Duke of Hamilton, is heir to the chieftain of Douglas, but he cannot actually assume the title of chief since the Lord Lion King of Arms requires him to assume the single name Douglas as opposed to a double barreled surname. Do you think that His Grace Alexander Douglas Hamilton should acquire the title of chief? So if you have a view on this, we'd love to hear from you, pop it in the comments. So I know it's a, an area up for debate, so we love a good debate, don't we? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a bit of a bit sad that you can can yeah. claim his uh, his title as chief. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's quite sure. Yeah. yeah. If you've got an opinion, <laughs> um, let us do let us know. Yeah. Um we have also been asked um about the tartan, about the Douglas Tartan. So someone's asked, which of the Douglas Tartans should I wear? So as we discussed earlier, there are several different Douglas tartans, but really it's down to personal preference. Um, the Douglas tartans don't uh, sort of come under any specific regions, and um, they're all clan tartans, so you can go with what you like. Um, and I, I mean, I personally think that they're quite muted, quite sort of easy tartans yeah. to wear and to fit into sort of your current wardrobe. So they're always, <clears throat> even if you're not a Douglas, I think they're quite a good introduction to tartan as well and um, particularly the douglas gray is quite a nice yeah a nice quite sort of nice subtle tartan yeah. yeah so basically choose your favorite and go with that or combine them yeah wear a collection I, of... think, I think there's a nice range there as well i think there's whatever your preference of color is i think there's definitely something to suit everyone isn't there yeah exactly i think that's the the beauty of tartan is choose your color and yep. it will exist <laughs> Great. So, there we go. We hope that you've enjoyed learning all about the Douglases tonight with us. Um, a massive thank you for joining us on tonight's episode, and we hope that you'll be able to join us next week when we'll be joined by Ian Walker from Border Journeys, who I've actually been working with on an exciting ancestry project, so I'm certainly looking forward to talking about things ancestral. Um, 
we'll be talking all about my ancestral research and how to get started with your ancestry journey, as well as the fantastic guided tours which border journeys provide. So that's all from us this evening. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thank you.